Hello and welcome to the web tutorial for creating metadata for the World's Echo Project. The World's Echo Project, exploring cultural history online, began in 2014 with initial funding through a Wisconsin LSTA grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Through the Echo Project, the Winding Rivers Library System has expanded access to unique history materials in local libraries by developing a regional online collection of visi visual images representing Western Wisconsin history and culture. Before we begin, I suggest that you switch to full screen mode while you watch this tutorial. This will allow you to see the cells in detail on the spreadsheet as we fill it out. The purpose of this tutorial is to talk you through the steps for correctly entering the metadata that matches the images you scan for the ECHO project. There are a number of fields to fill out, each in a particular manner and using certain terminology. It's acceptable to leave some fields blank. If the information is not readily available in the photo, you can leave that field blank. Not all photos will have information for each field. It's also a good idea to have the physical photo or digital image, including the back, readily visible while creating the metadata. Don't forget to save the spreadsheet as you work. You do this by selecting File and then Save As. When it asks if you want to replace the copy, select Yes. You're essentially overwriting the document. The first field you're going to be filling out is the file name, and it is formatted as follows. WRLS for worlds, dash. The next two digits are going to be your unique library initials. So for this example, we're going to use Coon Valley, so CV. Then the image number for the images scanned. In this case, we'll begin with 0001. Again, it's a good idea to create the metadata as you scan the image, especially if you're scanning a large number of images, to avoid confusion. The second field you're going to fill out is date scanned. This will be today's date or the date you scanned the image. So in this case we are going to say 2015 December 21st. You will also want to be sure that you have any of the columns that contain dates to be formatted correctly and for that we are going to want to make sure that they have been changed to text boxes and not date boxes otherwise the date will be constantly changed to the wrong format you can do this by right clicking on the column format cells and then making sure that we have text not date okay the next field we're going to fill out is the date of the image, if known. If a year or more exact date is transcribed on the back of the image, or if there's a date visible in the image, enter that date. Don't guess or estimate dates. If no date is present, leave it blank. And it's going to be formatted the same as the date scanned field. So in the case of our example here, we are going to say the image came from 1938, September Sixth. The next field is the decade field. If a date is present, uh, include the decade that that date falls into. If there's not a date present, again leave it blank. So in the case of our example from 1938, we're going to say that the decade is the 1930s. The next field is the format. Here we are going to be entering the approximate dimensions, length and width, uh, using inches of the photo or image that's scanned. We're going to indicate whether the image is in color or black and white, and we're going to describe the format of the item, a postcard, a print, a photograph, a sketch, an etching, something along that line. So for example, we are going to say this was a 3 by 5 black and white. The next field is the Includes People field. If the image includes people, identified or not, indicate this with a yes or no. If there are people in the photo but they're not clearly visible, so for example they're far away or they're obstructed, uh, consider this as a photo without people. We are only noting photos as including people if they're visible and potentially identifiable. 
So skip any fake people, for example, drawings or advertisements, things like that. So for the purposes of our example here, we'll just say yes. The next field is person's names. If the people in the image are identifiable, include their names here, separating them with a comma. This may be an image where the people's name is written on the back, or you know who is depicted. So in the case of our example, we're going to say Jane Smith and John Smith. And they're separated by that comma. The next fields are the location fields. These are listed state, county, city or town, street, and geographic. We're going to enter information for all the fields known. Again, if we don't know, we're going to leave that blank. If an address is inscribed on a photo, include the street name and the block number. Do not record exact addresses. So if something says it's 311 Main Street, we're going to say 3rd and Main. So in this case for our image, let's say it's Wisconsin, and you can abbreviate with the initials, the county, and in this case we're going to say Vernon, City and Town, Coon Valley, Street, as I said, we'll say Third and Main. The geographic field, if the location is a geographic feature, like a river or a bluff, we're going to enter any state, county, and city information that's applicable, but we're also going to include the name of the geographic feature. Uh, for example, Black River or Granddad's Bluff in this column. So, so in the case of our example, we're going to leave this blank. The next column is the name of business or organization. So for our example, we're going to say that this is Smith's Auto Repair Shop. We're entering the name in the direct order. We're not going to use any abbreviations or acronyms. If an organization or business has undergone name changes in the intervening time since the photo was taken, enter the name applicable to the image at the time it was taken. The next fields are going to be the subject fields, and you can see that there are five of them. It is not necessary to utilize all five. The minimum is one, the maximum is five. And for this field, we are going to use the subject vocabulary list. This list will have been provided to you, but it will also be available on the World's NICO website. This is the controlled vocabulary for the subject headings. You can see there are for a number of specific organizations, types of businesses or organizations, and locations. So in the case of our example here, Smith's Auto Repair Shop, we are going to say it's a business. We'll go back to our subject heading. We'll go back to the list of titles. And since we had listed this as depicting two people, we are going to put in people individuals. And this is really for a single individual or two or three. If it's more than that, a class photo, for example, we would use people groups. So in this case, I'm going to say people individuals. And it may be necessary to change the width of some of these fields as we go along. Again, we'll go back to the vocabulary list. You can see that some of them are quite detailed. So for example, buildings, exterior and interior, you would only really need to include that if that's the key feature of the photograph. So for example, if this was a photograph that was meant to depict 
the ornate interior of a church. We would say building's interior. If it was the outside, the interesting architecture of the outside of this church, we would pick building's exterior. Similarly for houses, residences exterior, residences interior. We don't really need to put that for every photo, just as or image, just if it's remarkable in some way, or as I said, a feature of the photograph. Since our imaginary photograph was of Smith's auto repair shop from 1938, and there, let's say there were a couple of cars depicted in the uh, photograph, that might be of use to someone looking for images of cars from the 1930s, we would put automobiles. And then lastly, for our example, since this is an auto repair shop, let's say that one of those cars was depicted as being up on a hoist and it showed some of the tools, racks of tools and things like that. In this case, we could put uh, buildings interior. Going back to that list one more time, if this was a picture of a uh, factory or something along those lines, you might want to use machinery if it was a lumber mill, lumber and lumbering, etc. There's a number of different fields. Again, you don't have to use all of those fields. A minimum is one, maximum is five. The purpose of these fields is to provide information to the world's digital assistant as they upload the images to our website. They will attach metadata so that this will be searchable for people who are accessing the site. We're going to leave the fifth subject blank. Last few categories are notes field, copyright contact information, and copyright statements. The notes field is the field for you to add other information about the photo that maybe didn't fall into one of the previously mentioned categories. This is a free text field. Feel free to enter multiple types of information in this field, and it will be reviewed by the world's digital assistant at a later date. So, for example, let's say this photograph of Smith's auto repair shop was brought to the library by the grandchild of Jane and John Smith. So we're going to say that this photograph is owned by... Loretta Smith. If this was a photograph she gave to the library, you could change owned to donated. This is just for some additional information. The copyright contact information field is related to if this is a photograph or an image that is not owned by the library, that was perhaps brought in by a patron for use on the project, they're going to retain the original. In this case, you would want to fill in the contact information for that individual. If they don't want to provide that information, that's fine. Then the last field we're going to want to fill out is copyright statement. You have also been provided with a list of the copyright statements for the World's Echo Project. Again, you can find a copy of this on the World's Echo page. These are the different copyright statements that relate to the images that you'll have scanned. Some of them uh, will be in the public domain. You can see this is statement A. Statement B is this image has been made available with permission from the copyright holder. And as it says here, has been provided for educational purposes only. Commercial use is prohibited without permission. The third statement is copyright undetermined. And this states that the library has been unable to identify all the possible rights holders for this item and that the item may be under 
that may be protected under copyright law, and therefore the user is responsible for all issues of copyright. It is not necessary for you to repeat the information with each of these for each image. Instead, you can use the letter that pertains to each one. Many of the images that you will be using will be either through permission from a patron or if it's unknown. Some of them, if it's just a public image, will fall under, under the public domain, but most will be under B or C. So for the purposes of our example here, the photograph is owned by Loretta Smith, and she's letting the library scan it for the project. We are going to say that this image is made available through permission from the copyright holder. We'll just put B. So this concludes our tutorial for creating metadata for the World's Echo project. If you have any questions, please contact the World's Digital Assistant. Thank you.